Hello, my name is Patrizia Casaccia and I am the director of the Neuroscience Initiative at the Advanced Science Research Center of the City University of New York. Today, we will introduce you to the video abstract for our manuscript entitled Bacterial Neurotoxic Metabolites in the Cerebrospinal Fluid and Plasma of Multiple Sclerosis Patients. This work is the result of an interesting collaboration between basic science at the Advanced Science Research Center and clinical neurologists at the Corinne Goldsmith Center for Multiple Sclerosis at Mount Sinai in New York and at the Clinic for Multiple Sclerosis in the Northeast in Latham, New York. To start understanding how the gut bacteria communicate with the brain, we search for chemicals, which we call metabolites, that were found particularly abundant in the cerebrospinal fluid and plasma samples from multiple sclerosis patients compared to samples obtained from healthy control. We also evaluated the effect of disease-modifying treatment such as DMF, which we previously reported to dramatically change the composition of the gut microbiome. Shown here on the left side is the approach we used for the identification of the metabolized using an unbiased method, while on the right is a color-coded map showing the relative abundance in the cerebrospinal fluid of the chemicals listed on the right-hand side. The red squares indicate molecules with increased abundance in MS patients. The blue squares represent molecules with decreased abundance in MS patients relative to healthy controls. Hi, I'm Achilles Dranos, one of the first co-authors of this paper and an assistant professor of neurology at Icahn School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, specializing in multiple sclerosis research and patient care. To assess the metabolomic effect of DMF, we employ the weighted correlation network analysis. This analysis identified metabolite modules within our dataset, which are groups of metabolites that are highly correlated with each other the results of which you can see in panel A. Panel B shows the association of the metabolite modules with different patient traits. The top number here represents the coefficient of the model we used, and the FDR-adjusted p-value is shown below in parentheses. As you can see, the red module, which contains bacterially produced metabolites, is reduced after treatment in both plasma and CSF of RRMS patients. Here, you can see the box plots of the relative abundance of each individual red module metabolite among the different groups in our study, which are healthy controls, or HC, relapsing or meeting, and secondary progressive MS patients. Of note, the MS patient values plotted here are from the baseline CSF samples prior to DMF treatment. On this slide, the top panel shows the relative concentration of the red module metabolites in the CSF of RRMS patients before and after treatment with DMF, color-coded for each patient. Below that is the box plot of the plasma concentration of the same metabolites. These results suggest that DMF can reduce these bacterially produced metabolites after six months of treatment. In contrast to DMF, which is an oral therapy that has been shown to modulate the gut microbiota, anti-CD20 infusions that are given intravenously did not change these bacterially produced metabolites that we identified here after therapy. Hi, I'm Hesin Park. I'm a basic neuroscientist at ASRC and also co-first author of the paper. After we analyzing our patient samples, we assess the effect of this metabolite on neuronal activity in cultures. Using multi-well electrode array recordings, which allow for the characterization of the electrophysiological properties of the entire neuronal population, we found that these three metabolites indeed impaired neuronal function, as shown by decreased average neuronal firing rate, reduced number of spikes per second, and also a proportional decrease of neural network burst per second. However, co-treatment of neurons with monometifemorate did not impact the neurotoxic effect of these metabolites, therefore ruling out the potential direct effect of this drug on the identified metabolites. 
We also found that the relative abundance of the microbiome metabotoxins significantly correlated with biomarkers of neurodegeneration. In conclusion, our finding here supports the concept of metabolic component of the gut-brain axis as a potential therapeutic target for a MS patient. Although much awaits to be discovered, including a clear elucidation of the mechanism of action of these metabolites. I would like to thank you for your interest and many thanks to all the co-authors who participated in this study. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the investigator initiated the award by, funded by Biogen to me and to Dr. Edwards. Thank you so much.